About a year ago, I reviewed the Techware Phantom RGB TKL and I really thought that it was and still is a great solid budget mechanical keyboard. And Techware gained more attention after showing off this board at Computex this year, the Spectre Pro. I say it over and over again, while high-end custom mechs are amazing, I have a massive soft spot for budget mechs as it just makes it more accessible and means more people have the opportunity to get the mechanical experience. And the better the lower end gets, the better it is for everyone. Also, keep in mind that this is an early batch unit, so changes will come, which I'll mention. And here's the keyboard. Feels nice and solid, coming in at just over a kilogram, and with the internal steel plate, there's minimal flex. But let's get this plugged in, because this is when it shines. The included USB Type-C cable is nicely braided and fits snugly into place, but I always hate how these cables come folded because they look terrible. Fortunately, the hole is big enough for my Juju cable. And I absolutely love the design of this board. This is straight up the nicest looking enclosure on a budget mech and possibly even all plastic enclosure mechs in my opinion. But yep, yeah, it has a plastic enclosure which is this sweet nearly matte finish, satin I guess. The lines are clean and simplistic. The top edge is quite sharp but it is just plastic so it doesn't cut you or anything. We have rounded corners with a sizable one centimeter bezel. The sides angle outward slightly until it hits this stunning side glow piece and they nailed it. It's somewhat thin at about 2mm thick, but it shows off the light perfectly. The diffusion is on point and hides the screw bosses really quite well, but at the same time it's bright and vibrant, and because the bottom plastic piece comes inwards, it gives that aesthetic glow on the table. We can change the lighting with FN plus pores, which also includes individual colours, which is nice to match a theme. And the bottom is pretty plain, just a couple of rubber feet and two flip up feet that are also nicely rubber tipped. Back to the top, the LED lock indicators are also on point, they're flush with the plastic and use white LEDs. Not everything is perfect though, so the knob next to it, right now it's just a volume knob. Personally I find it really convenient and useful, but that's all it is for now. Whether you like how it looks is up to you. It is quite big. The top looks nice, but the sides are a bit cheapish. It does have a ring of light around it, which we can also change the color of, which is a nice touch. But the main thing is that it doesn't really follow the rest of the keyboard design. And on my particular unit, it's quite difficult to turn. It hits a spot where there's too much resistance on each rotation, so that made it quite annoying to use, but that should be quite easy for them to fix. And of course the font on the caps are pretty bad and do detract from the overall sleek aesthetic. However, they did tell me they will improve the keycap legends in future batches. They're made from 1mm thin ABS plastic, so not great, but they are double shot, so the legends are another piece of plastic and won't fade away. In addition to the side glow, we do have customizable RGB backlighting, so there's a bunch of effects and patterns that we can play around with. And we can also individually customise the colour of each key. We can also play with the lighting in the software that we can download from the website. So we have our three profiles that we can edit. In the LED editing mode, we have access to all our effects and patterns as well as brightness, and there's also our side glow and volume wheel colours. We can also customise each key with another key. There's also a bunch of media functions that we can assign, and finally macros which we can record with delays and cycles and such. In the manual, I didn't see a way to switch profile on board, so you do have to do that through the software. Fortunately, it is a full size, so I guess you can sacrifice a few keys if you wanted to assign stuff. It's a very basic piece of software, much like many other budget mechs, but that's fine because it works. Now to the other feature that Techware have had in some of their other boards, it has hot swappable Altemu key switches. I have Altemu brown switches in mind, so a light tactile switch with a mild bump halfway. Don't sleep on Altemu switches, I mean they're obviously using them to keep the price down and that's absolutely fair on a budget mech, but these browns in particular are more tactile than Cherry MX browns. That's not saying much, but that goes to show that these aren't bad at all. 
They also said that they're going to change to the dustproof variant of the Altemu key switches in the future. Anyway, these are using the Altemu hot swap sockets, meaning that we can pull out the key switches without desoldering. However, these are super tight as always, and I've never liked the key switch pullers that come with these boards, and yeah, you can see for yourself. But that's not the worst part. Because they're so tight, pretty much they're compatible with just our Temu key switches, so that means Cherry MX, Gatoron, Kale, Duroc, whatever key switch, are not fully compatible. So first of all, you do need a gap for the SMD LED, as it does protrude from the PCB. And if you have 5 pin switches, you gotta cut off those prongs. But basically, the pins just don't fit properly. Apparently you can file down the pins, but I've never bothered. And you can make them work if there is enough contact, even though the pins will be bent, but really, it's just our Tamu that will fit properly. With all that being said though, it's better than not having hot swap at all, so it's still easy to replace your key switch for whatever reason, but with our Tamu only. Anyway, here's how it sounds. Now this is the bit that killed me. The switches sound fine, the stabilizers aren't great with a bit of rattle, which is to be expected, but it's the metallic ping. It's crazy on here. I'm pretty sure it's the worst ping I've experienced on a modern mechanical keyboard. So this is that ping sound that lingers after each key press. This is something that I'm quite sensitive with, and I do specifically look out for with every keyboard I test, so it may not be much of a concern to you, but it is pretty bad. I did try to put some foam inside, but it didn't really help. Hopefully they can get this fixed, and I did tell them about it, so maybe there is a chance, but please, fix this. To open up the keyboard, there's a bunch of Phillips head screws on the bottom, as well as under the feet. Here's the bottom plastic piece, very simple with a bit of ribbing on the bottom surface. It's pretty low profile, so there's not much room in here, so I'm not sure what's making that noise. I couldn't take off the side glow plastic piece, as mine had two strip screws, but we can see why the side glow is so bright and even, and that's because there is a bucket load of side blasting RGB LEDs all around the edge. We can also see that the RGB SMD LEDs for the key switches are completely on the other side and therefore protrude from the top which is annoying for key switch compatibility but that doesn't matter anyway with these Atemu sockets which are soldered in. 
The plate is made from steel and is probably the standard 1.5mm, so nothing too out of the ordinary from what I can see, so yeah, not sure what's going on with the ping. By the way, the keycaps do look pretty nice with the backlighting off, but it'll look even better with some new keycaps. Okay, so this keyboard is an absolute looker. I think the enclosure design is as good as it gets for pre-built plastic case specs. It's clean, sleek, and the side glow is just perfect. Again, as good as I've seen. The volume wheel is useful, but I understand that it may not be for everyone and it could have been nicer. And that brings up the idea of having a 10 killers version of this. How good would that be? Just chop off the numpad and I think we'll have an absolute winner there. Anyway, the biggest disappointment for me with this at the moment is the horrible ping sound when typing. Again, this is from an early batch and I really do hope they fix that because sound is such a huge part of the mech and it does fail here. And as I mentioned before, they'll improve on the keycaps. Also, blank keycaps would look amazing on this. Surely it wouldn't be too difficult to have a stealth version. And thinking about it, imagine a stealth TKL version. How good. But I digress. One of the biggest features of this mech, as with many of their others, is the budget price. The recommended retail is only $65, it may even be cheaper at some stores, and that's just awesome. You get a really nice looking mech at a budget price with all the features I've discussed, but to techware, just take my advice and get this stuff fixed and you have a winner.